Uh, House Harkening, man, is just flat. Everybody, I think everybody uh, uh, in there, I say, like mm-hmm. I said, except for a few exceptions, man. Everybody, everybody uh, in House Harkening is is, is just terrible. Because uh, I, I don't think that the, the 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 I just think that the 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 villains are one dimensional. Yeah, they're either uh, hissing orders or taking glee and evil acts, you know, doing all that, you know, in the background doing all that stuff, or they're just yelling at people and constantly killing their own guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no wonder you assholes are losing this war, man. You, you kill more of your own man than the enemy does. <laughs> you, you don't want to be an advisor in this movie. No. Oh, no. <laughs> you dead on sight. <laughs> you, yeah. Folks, we have nine more tickets left for Double Toasted on Broadway. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Nine more tickets available for Double Toasted at the Broadway Comedy Club. I will be there on March 15th for a night of sit-down comedy back in the Red Room, 10 p.m. show. So get your tickets now by going over to broadwaycomedyclub.com or go to Double Toasted ny.com you can get your tickets today as long as they last got nine tickets left all right folks let's go ahead and talk about this movie that everybody's talking about uh, your boy paul paul got a lot of responsibility they say paul gonna be the one to save cinema <laughs> they, 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 they said they, i mean you think that that's dusty out there they said the box office has been a wasteland yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. this year yeah this year ain't been nothing but dirt that's him looking at the box office right now oh my god y'all want me to do y'all want me to say that? <laughs> i don't know if i can do that <laughs> boy y'all, y'all put that all on me <laughs> Yeah, that is Paul Atreides, and, they, and uh, that is our main protagonist of the Dune series. That is uh, from what Frank Herbert, mm-hmm. but brought to you by Denis Villeneuve. As I said, one of my favorite directors out there. Uh, the first Dune was an amazing feat. Now I ain't talking about the first Dune by that old crazy as uh, David Lynch. No, oh, uh, no, I'm talking, to say. No, I'm, I'm, I'm talking <laughs> about the, the first of the official good <laughs> Dune out there. It was an amazing feat because a lot of people have been saying over the years that Dune is unfilmable. Of course, you put it in the hands of a talented director, they do wonders, and, and to everybody's uh, uh, amazement, Denis the, the Villeneuve did a great job with it. I like I said, I wasn't crazy about the story, but I was I, I, I adored the direction. So the other thing that was amazing is that they took something that they said was unfilmable. And not only did they film it, mm-hmm. but they filmed it, put it out there and it made money. Yeah, it did it very made well. It made hella money. Yeah, it did. So you, uh, <coughs> so well, we got to go like, nah, 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 exactly. nah, nah, nah. <laughs> try to tell me what I can't do. Exactly. Yeah. And so while Mr. V News said, yeah, I created great art. One of us like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Get, go ahead and get some more money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now do it again. Yeah, do it again. I'll get art. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, go make another one. Get us our, get us our money. And that's what we have. Doom 2. Now, if anybody has kept up with the Doom saga right here, that they, they know that uh, Paul Atreides, his family, his people, they have been pretty much defeated. Or wiped it seems out. like wiped out by... What house honkies? What what that called? Harkonnens. Harkonnens. I mean, they are whiter than white. They're very white. I'm not too far <laughs> off, you know. But but uh, house Harkonnen came in and wiped them out. Tried to kill this, the family. Ended up killing Paul's father. And Paul said, "Oh, you shouldn't have kept my ass alive." <laughs> I'm gonna go out here with these sand people. And these sand. We're going to band together. I'm going to be back. I'm going to avenge my father. I'm going to avenge my people. And you will be defeated. Uh, which is harder than, 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 it, than, it, than it looks, harder than said, because uh, House uh, Harkonnen has amazing technology where you can see these people just run around the dirt. <laughs> you know? uh, the Fremen. Are, mm-hmm. Yeah, they, the, the sand people. But because they know the land of doom, the desert more than House Harkonnen. I said that right, man. Yeah, House yeah. Harkonnen, yeah, they, because they know the terrain better. They bring the fight to them. And, and that might just give them an edge and, and, and uh, give them a fighting chance to actually defeat the house, the evil House Harkonnen. Uh, as I said, I wasn't too crazy about the, the story in the first. But I did say 
the, the thing about Dune 1 is that it just felt like a lot of setup. Yeah. A lot yeah, of yeah. beautiful it, it setup. Yeah, 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 and it is. That's all it is. <laughs> yeah. I felt it was lacking in a, a lot of uh, character development. I, I thought a lot of characters like personality. But it was a beautiful setup, and I did enjoy the, looking at it. Uh, now that we're on the second part, they got no excuse. You got to get some real characters up in here. And the stakes are higher now. So hopefully, hopefully, can they can they come in and give me the character development that I'm looking for? Because, you know, it's all about me. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you love the movie. And uh, you yeah, love the yeah, first yeah. movie, yeah, too. Yeah. So, Well, I thought the first movie was okay. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Well, we'll see how we all think about this one with Dune Part 2. And we'll be back right after this with our review. Deal with this province. Send assassins. Fader Arthur, he's psychotic. I was talking about the first Doom and how it uh, didn't have a whole lot of character for me, which meant that it was lacking in story for me, but beautiful film, beautiful film. So we have the sequel now, which we expect to be better in a few ways. I mean, this is what we always would expect from a sequel to always get it. No, most time we do not get it. But I'm very happy to report to you, at least from my perspective, my opinion, this is better in many ways. I didn't think it could be done. I mean, I, the thing that I love the first movie for is the visuals. I love the direction, but the visuals, the, the visuals, the visuals are incredible. Mm -hmm. That's what sell the movie. Yeah, yeah, it really did. I didn't think you could outdo that. I didn't, but this, that's why I love, I'm gonna kiss this director's ass off. That's why I love, <laughs> that's why I love Mr. Vini, because he, man, he outdid himself. He outdid himself mm -hmm. in terms of direction, but also, incredibly with the visuals. This is better looking than the first film. It feels it, even more than the first film. One of the things I said with the first film, I said, you know what I, re what I really like about this? It feels like an alien, it feels like an alien world. Mm -hmm. Even right, though yeah. it's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of similar things in there that we can relate to. But this one feels even more. The like thing is, it's, it's Earth just in the far future. It is? Mm -hmm. Oh, this is? Mm -hmm. Well, this feels like an actual alien world right here. Again, with relatable elements, familiar elements in there. Uh, a lot of it feels like Muslims in space. That's basically what it is. Yeah, that was the inspiration. Yeah, because the 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 Fremen, the sand, the the sand the sand people. culture, the sand people, the sand culture, uh, the the costumes, the architecture. Uh, you know the, the uh, you know the even the the things that resemble their culture. It's. You know, all that stuff is very familiar, but then it feels also just uh, it, it feels like even though this is, this is Earth in the future, it just feels like another planet. Well, it, does. it, it all feels so very well thought out that that's what it is like with this yeah. culture. You know, you get the impression of everybody here had to learn a new language. Yeah. 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 No, it's it's incredible, man. I mean, if this doesn't get a, 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 I can see this already winning an award for best costume, oh, best yeah. cinematography. You know, best art direction. Right. It's it's that good. I, I have yet to see anything that looks this amazing on the big screen. And that the, the 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 visuals alone are worth it to tell people to go see this. That's worth the price of admission you alone. Go see right an there. IMAX. I would say. Oh yeah. And, you know, and, and and again, like I said, it's a. Uh, you know, you look at it and things might be familiar for a little bit, especially when you're hanging out in the desert, because that's one of the most familiar places in the movie, you know, uh, and, and and watching that culture. You know, the religion even feels kind of familiar with, you know, with resembling a, a Muslim religion. But then once you get settled in, you know, once you, you know, finally get down and say, OK, you know, I'm cool. You know, I can I can get that. I, I can I can I can, uh, I can live here, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, then. <laughs> Big ass, uh, dusty intestine, a big, a big uh, sandworm will bust through the ground. And that'll be another thing that tops this movie. You know, the, 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 the way they do the special effects here, the way they make it just feel so natural. Mm -hmm. They don't, you know, don't bust out the ground talking about uh, uh, oh, yeah. set piece, you know, yeah. so, you know, I don't say special effects, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, the way yeah. superhero movies do. Yeah. You know, this feels, it feels like a natural part of this world and those, those those uh those sandworm scenes are some of the most thrilling action pieces that I've seen in a movie in a while. And you know, it's like uh, it's like watching people like, you know, uh water ski on sand <laughs> on top of a giant worm. Watching that on the big screen oh, yeah. is amazing. Yeah. 
it makes you <laughs> makes you feel like yeah. Yeah. Yeah, really? I know, yeah. right? Shit, my eyes were itching. Yeah. My, my asthma kicked in after watching this. And still, I want this to be a ride somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I want this to be what, Universal Studios. I want Universal, Universal to buy this to the rights to have this as a ride at Universal man, from Warner Brothers. I want to ride. I want to ride a worm. Go off the ride. Some, some people are like, hey man, watch your phrases. Exactly. 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 I don't care. Yeah. I want to ride the biggest worm out there. Yeah, man. What would they even call that ride? <laughs> ride the worm. Ride the worm. <laughs> Ghost ride the worm. <laughs> yeah. It's in 4D. Yeah. yeah, man. Ride the worm, man. I, I love this scene. Well, so I love much. how they set it up the way they do that because it wasn't mm. like jumping on it and going yippee ki yay. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> they didn't no, have a cowboy hat and all yeah. this kind of stuff. There was a reason behind it. Oh, yeah. 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 And I'm going to tell you, man, I want to. Based on just scenes like that alone, especially a scene like this, I I want to see this again because, and I'm not going to tell you which theater that I saw, which theater I saw this in because I don't want to make it seem like I'm talking bad about the theater. It's a good theater, but they they you know they are not equipped to just show big blockbusters. <laughs> they they aren't. I was no. surprised they were having it. There. Man, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to lie. The theater that we're at is it's a decent theater for the right movies. I the love great seeing theater. our th movies. There. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, for, yeah. but but when they try to show blockbusters. It's like they put up a bed sheet <laughs> and, and, and got a projector that they bought at Best Buy and just and tried to show these movies. And it's just, well, and no, it, man, it, it, it don't that, work, man. bro. It don't work. Man, it don't. It don't and I'm going to tell you the reason why, because they're really not equipped for sound. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah and I'm going to tell you why, because the, the, the screen was doing something. I thought it was part of the movie. Oh, so, was it rattling? So, <laughs> so every time a loud sound came on, the screen would ripple like that damn glass in Jurassic oh, Park, that glass of water. Oh no! And, and, it, all, and it and it kept hitting in this spot right here. Oh. And so I thought the whole time I thought like, oh, Paul's communicating with the world. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was like Aquaman. I yeah. thought he was like, I thought, yeah, I thought he, I thought it was right, it was right here the whole uh -huh. time. And I thought, oh, he's telepathically talking to the world. And that's why he's actually riding this shit so well. And then they got to other parts where somebody would just drop something and then the the, the, the screen would ripple and I'm like, wait a minute, that's his old cheap ass screen up there, man. Well, man, I saw it in IMAX and uh, and you know how Hans Zimmer, he he always has his volume cranked oh, all yeah. the way up <laughs> into the red. So everything, it was just blowing, it was blowing out oh, my yeah. eardrums oh, the whole same time. Way. I saw it in, uh, in XD, which is pretty much IMAX. Yeah, so yeah. Like, that shit was loud. Yeah. yeah, and I, I mean, I got to give it to them. That sound system is great, but that poor screen was just, <laughs> that poor screen was trying to hold itself up. <laughs> holding on like, like oh. <laughs> turn, <laughs> turn it down. <laughs> I don't know how much more I can take. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit more. You're almost there. <laughs> well, the decibels were about to tear that screen up. <laughs> I, I thought he was doing some Aquaman shit the whole time. I, was like, I really did. I thought, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking to the world. No, dumbass. I thought he was. No, I, thought he was I thought he was telepathically communicating with the world. I thought that the whole time. I'm like, that's a cool effect. <laughs> It seems not to be happening. This thing still be bubbling. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but it's a, hey, listen, man. It's a, it's an amazing. It's, a, it's an amazing look. And as I said, the thing that's giving this movie such an otherworldly design, a lot of it is very reminiscent of H.R. Uh, Geiger. Oh, yeah. Even though it's not full Geiger, but it's no, close. No, no, no. That's no. the guy that did like the designs for Alien. Right. And, oh, yeah. You know, some other things. Right. Out there. And he did some designs for. Dune way back before it got when it, was, when it was not going to be Dune, it was some other crazy ass <laughs> yeah, movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but it's funny how that came around full circle because it looks like a lot of this stuff looks like H.R. Uh, Geiger, but it makes more mm -hmm. sense for what they're doing with this with with this right here. Because, like I said, the 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 the, the costumes are amazing, man. And then when House Harkonnen comes in, man, that's that's when things get really otherworldly and impressive. Because, like I said, you know they they're the ones that come in. With uh, the architect, the the architect that looks nothing like we've seen before, you know they could they have the the costumes are just vastly different from things that we've seen. Their weaponry, you know, all of it looks like it's dumb. It's from an alien world. Uh, they had like where I could look at the Fremen, the you know the the, the heroes or the Sand people, and be like, oh, you know that this looks like a. Uh, uh, Egyptian or Arabic or mm -hmm. you know or Muslim culture right here. You know, I I was looking at some of the shit that they that the that the Harkonnens did and I'm like, I don't know what the hell that is. 
Well, they're, they've just reached this point of decadence where they almost have more of a, a, a Geiger or Giger look to themselves. Yeah. But, but yeah. yeah, they they like if you take the everything you think about the ancient Romans and just multiply that by 100. Oh, yeah. Giant tanks. I mean, tanks that are huge. Mm hmm. It's, yeah, it's amazing, man. Like they, they like, and that's. I don't know if this is CG or if something. This is practical, but they had these, uh, these huge, these huge ass tanks out there, man. And they, and they, and and the and the freemen are battling around it. They're like ants running in between the the, the machinery. Uh, it's very thrilling. Um, but then they, they in, you know, and again, all that's familiar. But then they'll get into some stuff like they had a big ass pyramid with a big snot bubble coming out of mm -hmm. it. I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, um, okay. It looked cool. It looked cool. It did. Like I don't know what it does, but it looks like it works. <laughs> it, work, it worked for them. Yeah. I, just, I don't know what it is. I'm not going to ask questions. It's, it's doing its job, whatever it's doing. But I thought that that was a. Uh, I thought that was amazing, and the way that the uh, that the the house harkening uh, those are the enemies, by the way. The way they come in and just uh, and it's it's a great looking contrast between them fighting the people who are who live in the sand because the people know how to navigate in there, mm -hmm. and then to, but then to watch the house harkening people go out and navigate in the sand, it looks very alien too. You know the way they have to fly up the the, the different terrain. Oh yeah. Uh, you know it's it's yeah it's it's really impressive, man. You know what the. Uh, I would say that this is a movie that you just don't watch. It's a movie that you just kind of, you live in it. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Even if you're there and not getting off on the story or anything, the story's not doing it for you, you could just sit there and just kind of just live the, in the world of this movie right here. And you know what? And I realized, I realized why everything felt so naturally alien in here. And that's because there's not a big reliance on CG. Mm -hmm. You know, it, or it doesn't feel like everything's done on the green screen. Right. Even if it is, you know, I'm, a lot of this stuff is for sure to be CG. I'm sure they did some green, green, green oh, screen well, they stuff. they had to, especially when they're on the uh, with the Hark Harkonnens and and they got big crowd scenes. I'm I'm sure oh, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. they were using it for that. Oh, but yeah, but yeah, with the sure. with the Fremen, oh, we yeah. spent so much time in the desert and like that's not CG. That's the desert. That's on location. They were out there. <laughs> People were getting dirt in their ass out there mm -hmm. making this movie. All right, it was getting sand all up in their crevices out there. I mean, you talk about people, I'm sure people are suffering for their art, but that's why I think it's so important to try to, you know, try to at least apply a little bit. Now, listen, whatever you, it depends on whatever you're trying to do. Maybe if you're trying to do a comic book movie, you know, fine. Everything looks green screen. It's supposed to be fun and whatnot. But I think that's the problem with some of the hero fatigue that we're getting. A lot of these comic book movies are starting to look very artificial. Yeah. You know, they're starting to be, you know, we're starting to recognize that everything is green screen, mm -hmm. you know, not here. You know, everything, a lot of it looks like it was shot on location. A lot of it looks like uh, it was not done on a green screen. Even, and, if it, and if it was, or if things were CG, then it it felt organic. Yes, but also what separates it from the, the superhero movies we talk about is that this is a very mature themed. Mm -hmm. Like everything people are fighting for here, you know, it's not about, you know, a, a beat em up. Um, these are people's you know, the lives of, of cultures mm -hmm. try to stay alive. One of the big standouts in the movie, man, is just, this movie just has so much, uh, it has a, it has a theme. Visually, it certainly has a theme, but I just love the way things will suddenly change up and take on a completely different look. Mm -hmm. um, that gladiator scene. Oh, man. That's the big visual standout in this. The, everything goes to black and white. And then the costumes change drastically. I mean, you want to talk about where things really start to feel alien. It's right here. And also kind of, kind of takes on a psychedelic feel. Yes, it does. Because it made me think back to, you know, we laugh about what Jodorowsky wanted to do with Dune, where he was going to go all over the place and barely even tell the story. But there's some scenes in here that have that 70s sci-fi psychedelic feel that made me think back to the, the kind of stuff he was doing. It really does. Like, look at the costumes here. Mm -hmm. But then... They'll do things to really make it feel like this is another time, this is another world. So to kick off the festivities of the of the gladiator fights, you know, instead of fireworks being uh, uh, blown up in the air, it's like ink blots, mm -hmm. like liquid ink blots yeah. just being, you know, I'm like, I don't know what the hell is going on here, but I'm freaking out. <laughs> but no, it looked, and it looked amazing. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's, a lot of this is just, a, you know, there's a, there's a lot of art direction here that's just, we haven't really seen it done like this before on this kind of level. 
Go see this on IMAX, man. I'm telling you. It, it, it makes you realize how many movies, you know, I say like this, you've seen that just done on a template. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, you know, Rebel Moon. Yeah. Again, <laughs> where it felt so CG, mm -hmm. artificial. These people ain't standing on this thing. There's a damn AI <laughs> making this background yeah. back here. So. And whatever it is they're fighting for, you're like, I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't yeah, care. I don't care. Yeah. But man, like I said, this is so fully realized as far as this world goes, man. The cultures, the look, the environments. It's, like I said, this is not, this goes beyond just sitting there and watching a movie. This, you know, you are a participant in this world. You are living in this world. That's how realized it is. It's amazing. I thought it was, and I, I, I love it. I'd, I'd watch it again for that. So we've just, gushing about how this movie looks. People are like, damn, is there a story here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I would say that story-wise, a lot of my criticisms from the first Dune, they still exist here mm -hmm. in within some form. Story. Yeah, within the story. They still exist here in some form or another. Um, even though this is a, 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 a big improvement over the first Dune. Mm -hmm. Now, we just talked about it. I don't know how you feel about this. Y'all can tell me, but as I said, you know, the first movie was set up. And now we're actually getting into, into the, the meat of the story, which means that we're getting into uh, uh, actual character development, which I thought was lacking in the first film. You know, uh, Timothy Chalamet as, as, as Paul Atreides. I didn't care for him in the first movie. And I like him as an actor. I like him. But he was a little bit too laid back in that first movie for me. He was kind of like that guy who everybody thinks is cool, but it turns out he's just sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> or just maybe a high. <laughs> you know, he, 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 special yeah, he, he's the kind of guy that when you talk to me, you always got to wave your hand in front of him. Hey, uh, hey, you listen to me. Yeah, no, yeah, I, no, I, I, hear, I hear you. Yeah, yeah go on. Yeah, he just, he, you know, he just looked, looked sleepy or high to me in that first movie, man. Uh, here, he carries more emotional weight. Because in that last movie, the, oh, the biggest reaction we got to him in that last movie, they tore that hand up. Oh, it's in the box. Pain. Wake your ass up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, get a, I'll get a reaction out your ass. <laughs> yeah, uh, here his story is more important. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, he's uh, a lot more is expected of him. He has to rise to the task of uh, of being the reluctant hero here. You know, he's uh, yeah. He's a uh, he, you know. He's uh, he's given a lot more presence and a lot more weight because he's put in this position where half the the, the Freeman Sam people they worship him, and the other half looking at him like I'm gonna get that. He ain't shit. <laughs> you know, yeah. they look they half the half the people they always bowing to him, and he don't want that. And he tries to talk to other people like, well, these people are cool, and they like, you know, I'm gonna shank your ass in the shower. <laughs> 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 so he's it's really an interesting position that he's put in. Mm -hmm. He doesn't, you know. He doesn't want to be a false prophet to some of these people, which is what is happening here. You know, he's he, we're getting to that story trope now, the one, the Messiah. And sure. All that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, but the other people are are pretty much uh, they are uh, uh, they don't want to own him. They don't want they don't want him there. They you know he looks he's an intruder to them. I thought that that was really cool, and because of that, I believe that now okay now we got some sort of conflict for this character. We got we got stakes for this character. You know, there's there's something here to make him actually have some emotion. You, you don't think having his family massacred and, and then trying to <laughs> chase him gave him stakes? No, not in the first movie. And that's mm -hmm. what I found pretty. Mm -hmm. That's what I had a, crit I, a criticism yeah, about. It's I like did feel like it was lacking in the first. Movie. No, yeah. no, I I agree with you. Yeah, his family, like exactly what you said. His father died. His, his, he's trying to protect his mother. He's trying to fit in and find his way in life. And I felt none of that from this character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I I I I agree with you there. Um, I I do feel like. I get why you would, you know, cast him. He is a popular name. Mm -hmm. He looks like the character. Uh, and he's known to be a good actor. I don't think he's necessarily bad in these, but I do feel like he could emote more. Like they probably could have cast somebody probably not as well known who could have really brought it for both movies. You haven't said a lot though. How you feel about it? I mean, Tim for Jordan? like we talking about just Paul in this movie, uh, Timothy, I thought, at least person, I think he was like, I think this is like his best role I've ever seen him in so mm. far. Like just the amount of like range he was able to display on the screen. Mm -hmm. As I'm watching it, I'm like, I have never seen him be so good in a movie. Yeah. Like this was I was I felt like he was better <laughs> here than he was in Wonka, the first Dune. Uh I'm not sure too much what I've seen him in, but at yeah, least have you so seen far, Call Me by Your Name? No. He's actually really good in that. It better than better than this? I think so. I think uh, yeah, okay. I think I do I actually do. I think well, he's at least, least for me not about much, but, uh, <laughs> but at yeah. least for me, this is the best I've seen him. Yeah. No, he's he's you know, he's I I, I like him in this. He's really I good do. in that movie where he's a cannibal. 
Oh, he was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a movie where he's, he's going around eating people. What? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> man. No, this, Martin's it, right. It, it's a good movie. What's it it's, called? It's him and a girl. It's something with bone in it. I don't know if it, I don't think it was flesh and bone. I forgot what it's called. Oh, uh, that might have been it. Yeah, it could have been it. Yeah, yeah. I forgot what was that name. The, the name of that movie, y'all. But yeah, he Martin's right. I forgot about that. He's actually really good in that. That's probably his best performance. Flesh and bone. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's, <laughs> what you say is a cannibal. Go around. <laughs> go around go <laughs> the way around. you describe it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, man, it, it really is. Him and his girlfriend going around that country eating people. But yeah, but, but being chased by another older cannibal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would have been better if he's eating Factor, man. Oh, you know, I could have saved, oh, could have, oh, could have saved oh, a lot. Oh, could have, oh, if Factor was around, he could have saved a lot of lives, man. Hey, man, if they offer human meat. I don't, I don't think that they offer human meat in there, but with all these different varieties of meals, he would have said, no, but I think I'm going to stop eating people and get some of this good Factor right here. Uh, somebody said bones and Factor. Yeah, people. Let me tell you about Factor. This this portion of the show was brought to you by Factor. And for all the busy people out there, we had a whole discussion before the show, about did, before the review, did. talking about eating healthy. Mm -hmm. A lot of people out there, they want to eat healthy, but they say, man, I just don't have time to do it. You know, and also it's really expensive. You know, if only, if only there was an easier solution and more economical. Well, that's what Factor says, we got you. <laughs> You know, the thing with Factor is eating easy doesn't have to be hard and complicated. You know, they make eating better every day a whole lot easier with 35 different options a week to choose from, you know, depending on your lifestyle. Now, they, if you're accountable, they can't help you. But if you have, you know, on the keto diet, keto, 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 hiya, keto. If you're on the, uh, <laughs> <Keto. laughs> uh, hey, you're, you're a vegetarian, you're a vegan, you know, you but whatever you're doing, they can help you out. And there's even more to enjoy. They have 55 nutrition pack add-ons to add even more variety to your meals. And they also have two minute meals. That's the thing about this. A lot of this is heat and eat. Mm. So they package these healthy meals up for you. And all you got to do is put them in the microwave and heat it up. And uh, ooh, ooh, healthy eating. Here I come. <laughs> your body will thank you. Two minute meals that will... You can serve up hot and ready to eat very quickly. They even have snacks and smoothies out there. Nice. You know, I love my smoothies out there. More than uh, your snacks? More, <laughs> man, I snack on smoothies. I eat <laughs> smoothies for dinner. I really do breakfast sometimes. Yeah, I just yeah. enjoy a nice smoothie. It's good to know that Factor can help me with my smoothie game out there. Uh, they also have, you can sign up and save. Factor is less expensive. I'm telling you, man, I was telling you this. Factor is less expensive than takeout. You know this. And because you hear that, you're thinking, well, man, I can't be putting that up that quickly and it's got to be healthy. No, every meal is dietitian approved out there. Somebody, you know, a healthy guy looks at it and says, yes, you did it right. Send it out. It's, it's well, Mars getting hungry. Look at him. Yeah. Mm. When you saying all that. He, he's not trying to hold in that slobber right there. Look at it. <laughs> uh, flexible for your schedule, too. You can get as much or as little as you need. Choosing between six to 18 meals a week. And they will be delivered to you. And as I said, there's no prep here. You know, these meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. So again, healthy, keeps your body going, and also doesn't infringe on your time. It's everything that you're looking for. You have no excuse for not eating healthy anymore. That whole thing about having a busy schedule, forget that. Factor has got you. And you know what? You really don't have an excuse right now. Because I got something for you right here that's going to save you money. Even more money than Factor already does. If you head to factormeals.com slash toasted50 and use the code toasted50, you'll get 50% off. I don't want to hear no excuses from you no more. But, but. No, no, but nothing. But, but not, but you need to do this. This is what you need to do. I don't want no butts up in here. <laughs> hey, Factor don't serve no butts, all right? <laughs> Uh, yes, sir. Nothing but healthy meals for you. Hey, I want to thank Factor for coming in and sponsoring this portion of the show. And I want to thank all of you out there for your support. Let me see what else we got here. I want to ask y'all, how did you feel about the whole romance subplot with Zendaya? I forgot the name of her character. Uh, Chani. Uh, Chani. Yeah. yeah, she's a, you could say she's a Fremen warrior, soldier out there. Uh, I, I did, I bought her as a 
tough female fighter in the first one. I liked her character. Mm -hmm. I liked her character actually more than him. Yeah. But what'd you feel about the romance subplot with them in this? I, I, I didn't have a problem with it. I thought it was authentic. Authentic. I mean, it, it you know, it kind of plays out. I mean, you know, she seemed like she was, you know, she's trying to be tough, but she was kind of favoring him in, in the oh, last yeah. movie. Yeah. I like that. See, this is the thing. Uh, I like the uh, I like the romance subplot with them because I think it does add more to Paul's character development. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there's a whole lot of real strong real chemistry. chemistry. Yeah, yeah, I didn't feel like it was great. Yeah, yeah. But you know, man, it, they built up to it. I mean, you know, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it didn't just drop out of nowhere. No. It wasn't like, well, I guess it's time for the romance. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, there was a spark. Like when he was walking around, every now and then she gets on the side yeah, eye. Yeah, and her friend was like, yeah, like what, what you doing? Him? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, he all right. <laughs> what? <laughs> it was a girl always. Paul, man. Uh, oh my gosh. You didn't even say nothing to her either. I know. You suck. Yeah. Come on, man. Who are you? Yeah, he would say something like, uh, uh, and she was, because they speak in the language, he can't speak. And she, he would was, he was say something like, how long is it before we go out there and fight? And she would say something like, when your mama sits on my face or something like that. He's like, what? I, I know you. <laughs> and, and, and Zendaya cared to be like, leave him alone. You, you like him, don't you? But they were, they were good together. I didn't think the chemistry was strong, but I thought there was a spark, and it it played out fine. I I, I liked them together. Maybe I'll show you the way. <laughs> and sand all in him. That's funny. We watched that scene. She had to stare at his lips a whole lot I know, to give him a signal. Like, <laughs> She, she sure did. She thought that was a, a Spider Boy. What's his name? Uh, uh, Tom, Tom Holland. Holland. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I know what you mean. There's, there's, there's not the chemistry that you hope would be there, especially mm -hmm. for telling the story. Yeah. Um. I mean, but the relationship is it was super important for later. I, oh I, yeah, yeah, yeah. You no, know, it, it it's not just the romance because they have to put a romance in there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not because they have to cater to some part of the audience for that. Um, or it's a, you know it's a script requirement. You know, it's uh, it's not lazy. It's uh, they put it in there and it plays out in a bigger story. It's kind of cold blood the way it, it plays out. Yeah. And actually, that's when I liked Zendaya the most, man, because uh, she was good before. But boy, when you don't piss her off in this movie, mm -hmm. they got a scene where she just looks at the screen. She <laughs> pissed and she stares for a long time. Cause it got to a point I was like, I had to stop looking at the screen. I'm like, she gonna beat my ass. <laughs> she, you know, what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. talking about. I'm just I so know, used yeah. to her being in movies where she's either mad at somebody. Or she's being all sassy like this. Yeah. It's funny. A lot of her acting in this movie is with her eyes. Yeah. That's yeah. That's what I like the most. Uh, Josh Brolin. He's probably my favorite character in the movie because he's a, because he's just kind of, in this world, he, but besides Jason Momoa, who, spoiler alert for those who haven't seen the first one, he's not in this one. But both of them, they just bros, man. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's, I was like, I can relate to them. You know, they all, <laughs> They, they, you know, they're all drinking beer somewhere or something, right, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they, they work for the family. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're blue collar, yeah. man. You know, they, they just, yeah, they just down to earth, man. You know, they, they love the family. They're loyal, but they're not. They're not a tradies. They, they, you know. No, yeah, yeah. no, nah, nah, man. Ain't about that royalty shit. Yeah, yeah. No, they, no, they, they, they're cool, man. I like, I like him. He, he, he comes back, and I like what they did with his story because he's more of a, he's more of a rebel in this one because they got no family to work for, so he's kind of gone rogue in a way. Yeah. Um, it's a Ronan. Yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, Javier Bardem. I thought he was awesome in this. Yeah, he was uh, great in this. Yeah, I really liked the dynamic between him and uh, him, him and uh, uh, Timothy, Timothy Chalamet yeah. because uh, he's caught between having to train this kid and also worshiping him the whole mm -hmm. time, man. So he's just kind of like, I want to yell at his ass, but you know, he, he might be a god. So mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I don't know. But he's Javier Bardem is really good in this. Uh, so here's my biggest problem with this. As I said, you know, I think that I think they've done a better job with our protagonist here. But the villains, man, House Harkonnen 
those the, except ex, for one exception, and this oh, my man right oh, here, your, your boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's my new one. <laughs> me, Austin, Elvis, Austin Butler. Yeah, man. Yeah, the, man. He the, got he, the lips. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh boy, look at that ball cap. <laughs> he look, he look like a sex ass egg right there, man. <laughs> yeah, look, Austin Butler. That's my that's my new man crush. Right? My, my new boy toy. Right? Yeah, Zach Zach Efron got too old. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Austin Butler is my my new one, man. But uh. But uh, I'll talk about him in a little bit. But man, uh, uh, House Harkening, man, is just flat. Everybody, I think everybody uh, uh, in there, I say, like I said, except for a few exceptions, man. Everybody, everybody uh, in House Harkening is is, is just terrible. Because uh, I, I don't think that the, the 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 I just think that the 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 villains are one dimensional. Yeah, they're either uh, hissing orders or taking glee and evil acts, you know, doing all that. You know, in the background doing all that stuff, or they're just yelling at people and constantly killing their own guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no wonder you assholes are losing this war, man. You, you kill more of your own man than the enemy does. <laughs> you, you don't want to be an advisor in this movie. No. You, know? <laughs> you dead on sight. <laughs> you, yeah. Cause you just you know they 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 don't have advisors to just listen to them or give them good advice. They wait for them to tell them something they don't like <laughs> so that they can kill them <laughs> and then blame them for that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, really, they they just yell and beat people's heads into the consoles, <laughs> slice people's necks, um, and also I think where the 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 heroes, the protagonists, have gotten better. I think the heroes have. Re I mean, I'm sorry, the villains have regressed. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave Batista in this man, I think uh, I think that he uh, who plays uh, Robin Harkonnen, uh, you know, he's one of the royal members of the House of Harkonnen. Uh, he really had nothing to do I with this he, movie. I think he got worse in this one than he did in the first his one. His character did, at least. Yeah, they cut yeah. his nuts. Well, he, like, he had plenty to do. Uh, up and, 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 and run and look. <laughs> yeah, he, he messed up so bad oh my God. that he had that look on his face the whole movie. <laughs> there is one scene with him and uh, Austin Butler. Oh, yeah. I was like, hell no. Nah. Oh, that shit would not fly with me. <laughs> Listen, if you had been messing up as much as he had, Man. You have no choice. You got to kill me at that point. Austin Look, Butler said, you <laughs> so much, you can get on your knees and kiss my feet. Case, I die. He's like, I really don't want to do this. <laughs> You're not really going to make me do this, right? <laughs> but I, mean, I don't want to die either. You meant metaphorically. <laughs> So Austin Butler, out of all of these villains, he's probably the one with the most personality. And even then, his whole thing is just, he's just psychotic. Yeah, That's he's, it. He's, yeah, he's one dimensional, very one dimensional. Yeah, but he gives probably the most, the, the, the biggest performance with the most personality. And Austin Butler is good with what he has. He also yeah, yeah. does an amazing job of imitating the voice of Stellan Skarsgård. He really does. I didn't think about that. Because I kept thinking, like, who does he sound like? Oh, <laughs> Stellan Skarsgård is right there <laughs> next to him. You know what, Martin? I didn't even think about that. Mm -hmm. that, that, that there's a connection there. Yeah. I thought, oh, he's just doing a cool voice. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, I really I liked him in this. I wish they I, we could have got more out of the out of the character out of that character because he's so good. And yeah. I just wish the other villains had actually had more personality. Um, you know, Stellan Skarsgård is back again. That's who I meant by the guy who just hisses orders. There's nothing going on. Um, also, uh, Christopher Walken is in this, but he's not giving up. He don't have much to do. Either. He's he's not, <laughs> you know if they make a third one, then he, he'll probably they, be in there more. They, they yeah. need to. Yeah, they they actually set it up so much for the third one that they have to make no, a third. No, one. The, the the way this story is, the third one is actually the most important one. Really? Not, yeah. Oh, okay. Really? Have you more, read the, more than this one? Yeah, yeah. Because what happens in the third? The third one, <laughs> I, I don't want to say much, but it kind of turns things around, but not in a like, mm. oh, let me turn this around. It's like, no, this was planned. So where you in mm. here, it's like, yeah, but see, this is what we've been talking about. Okay. Why, why this is not yeah. good. No, the Christopher Walken, he's, he's it, it, they really have to do a third one because he's a, Again, a little bit of a spoiler alert, but he's a setup man. You know, he's kind yeah, of he's the emperor. He's the emperor in yeah. here, and who knows what's planned with him. I really, there's a lot that I would love to see them do a third one on because they listen. This is not, this is not just like one of these things where oh, we could probably end it right here and that that'll be it. No, they set up so Hell much. No, <laughs> no, they set up so much that needs. You got to go somewhere. Well, I, I, I know he's not in it that much, but I thought he's in it just enough 
to not go Christopher Walken. Yeah. Like if it was more, <laughs> he would have been he would have been doing the Christopher Walken. Yeah. yeah. So, so they, they got just enough and cut it off before he could get to that point. They cut yeah, it off before yeah. everybody else started doing Chris Walken impressions. Yeah. So, yeah, he's in the beginning and then at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who, who likes side? <laughs> uh so here's my point about why I think I can't just say Chris, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Timothy Chalamet, uh, it's, it's, you know, we, he still needs more character because I think even with the characters that I like here, I think everybody kind of needs to step it up. And, I, and, and I'm, I'm even more confident in my opinion about that after what I read today mm-hmm. with uh, Denis Villeneuve. And who I say is one of my favorite directors. I actually love this guy's movies, but uh, the, so just to talk about the movie before I talk about what he said, you know, this movie, and a lot of you already know this, especially those who read the books. I'm actually surprised to hear about how people did not realize how much influence this movie did have. Mm-hmm. Like people who are fans of this, of, of this, of these books still did not realize how much of an influence it has on Star Wars. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> but that's the thing, you know, there's a lot of themes in this movie, you know, uh, the young Hero prophesies to be the one, the savior, the messiah, uh, the evil empire of uh, space Nazis, you know, uh, uh, usually led by a cold blooded killer who's psychotic. We've already talked about that, uh, who people love to hate, but they got to be like, damn, he's cute. And you got like a lot of swagger. You know? <laughs> so <laughs> I mean, we talked about that. Uh, a wise sage who trains the hero. Trade wars. Trade wars. <laughs> yeah. You know, we've seen these themes in everywhere from Star Wars, of course to the Matrix, Mm -hmm. to Game of Thrones, as you were saying, you know, uh, but a lot of, you know, I'm not saying that, now these themes we've seen before, and I'm not saying that we should criticize Dune for that, because Dune laid the groundwork for a lot of these properties that we've seen, and also borrowed from some other things. But my point is, is that even though Dune might have preceded a lot of these properties of movies, and these other properties, I like the characters a whole lot more because they're more memorable. Yeah, uh, the the thing, I, the one thing I found lacking in this is that, with like, it just seems like his focus is on telling this big story, which is great because it yeah. is a yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, huge yeah. sweeping story. But there's not many uh, places where it gets personal. Yeah, that, and, yeah, and like like it's you don't you don't really like meet it on a personal level. It's like you're you're watching from a distance, mm-hmm. and you're you're not having the characters that you really like. I mean, in the first one, you got it right off the bat with Josh Brolin, and Jason Momoa, uh, yeah. um, um, Gurney, and, and Duncan Idaho, because uh, they they just brought personality to yeah. it. But everything else has been very serious and matter of fact. And and yes, the romance with them could have been that that opening, but it's it's never quite there. The person who probably most gives it to you is Javier Bardem. Yeah, because he's yeah. got a lot of personality. <clears throat> he's got some humor and he's just, you know, he's he's he's, right. he's he's becoming, if he wasn't already a religious zealot. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the thing is, is that when you walk away from all these other movies that have these same themes, there's always at least one character that you you love. Luke Skywalker, mm-hmm. Han Solo, and, uh, Han Solo uh, Morpheus. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, uh, name any Game of Thrones char- character. You know, I mean, you 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 always walk away remembering these characters. And I, as much as I enjoyed this this movie, probably more because of the visuals, I will not walk away remembering any of these characters. Really, mm-hmm. I might remember a performance or something, mm-hmm. but I might. Mm-hmm. I'm not none of these characters. I'm on. I'm going to remember. I'm not. And the reason why I say I'm more comfortable in that opinion is because I read something today where the director, Denis Villeneuve, he was saying that he just, uh, it's a, first of all, it's an article in Variety where he says that uh, television and, uh, and, and release dates have, correct, have corrupted cinema. They've rushed cinema. Mm-hmm. They've, uh, you know, it's taken away attention from appreciating movies on the, on the big screen. But he also says something interesting here. He says, frankly, I hate dialogue. Oh, dialogue is for theater and television. I don't remember movies because of a good line. I remember movies because of a strong image. I'm not interested in dialogue at all. Pure image and sound. This is the power of cinema. But it is something not obvious when you watch movies today. Movies have been corrupted by television. I have to agree with that tremendously because how many quotable lines have we got from movies? Yeah. You know, but that whole thing of 
I don't like dialogue. I'm a visual director. And I said, man, you know, the whole time I was looking at this, I was thinking that I was saying that he has definitely put the visuals as his main priority over story. Right. Oh, right. Yeah, right. Of course, yeah. You know, and, and, and it's, you know, you can see it. You could, I, I just think these characters are lacking because his, because the visuals are his character mm -hmm. in the movie. And that's why I thought like, wow, you know, I, I, I do like this better than the first one, but I still think it's lacking in story. And I think he pretty much admitted why it's probably that way. It's, it's by choice. That is very disappointing. I, I hate when I hear that. I had a friend who was a writer and I, and I remember I would be like, yeah, man, some of his dialogue is pretty clunky. He's like, oh, yeah, I, I, I can't do dialogue. I don't like dialogue. And I was like, I feel like you got to fix that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, all of it. Cinema works because of everything, yeah. including dialogue. Yeah. And so that's a personal preference for him. I get that he wants to make a movie where there's no dialogue. He's almost making it sound like I'm going to do this as a revolutionary thing. And I'm, they've been doing that for a long time. Yeah. We just had two movies last year that had no dialogue. And mm -hmm. uh, go see that. Uh, watch that movie that was on uh, Hulu. Uh, oh, uh, no, no one can one. save you. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, the alien movie. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I understand if he wants to do that. But I'm just saying it's very obvious where his priorities lay. And it's in the visuals. And I think it really shows that the story is lacking here because of that. He has created an, an amazing cinematic experience. So Christopher Nolan doesn't want you to hear the dialogue. <laughs> and he don't want it to even be in there in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't let those two work together. Oh, good Lord. Yeah. Everybody, everybody going to be in that movie talking about, mm -mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just looking at each other. Yeah, just, with mm -hmm. loud music playing right. in the yeah. background. Mm -hmm. Big ass explosions. Mm -hmm. Hans Zimmer's just like, well, more room for me. Yeah. <laughs> Crank it up, boys. <laughs> the only dialogue going to be somebody with a mouth on, bah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, man. I but it's still a, 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 his direction is so strong, mm -hmm. and the production on this is so strong. Uh, it is a true cinematic experience if you're able to watch this on the big screen. You know, we don't get a lot of movies these days where you say you have to watch this on the big screen, uh, and I do believe you need to do that. That's why I would give this a, a low full price. But I will say I'm I'm, I'm disappointed still. I'm disappointed that you know because I think the story is rich. I don't think it'd be that much to like actually build these characters up just a little bit more. I'm so with you. The direction on this, I think, is amazing. And while the dialogue not is not great, I love this story. I, mm -hmm. I like where it's going. I like what it's doing. I like how, yes, you have the the one, the the white savior who's coming in, but he is <laughs> reluctant. But there's also a debate on is he, is he not? And even he's like, man, I don't know if I want to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's just so many uh, undertones to it of, you know, what's going on. Like they keep dropping little hints about what's going on with their religion, like how these people have been in, in, indoctrinated with this religion that's been used to enslave them. It's just so it's just so much of our world history that's playing out here. It's it's very interesting to watch. And even, you know, hey, going into uh, a, a desert place. To, to mine their resources. Mm -hmm. Wow, has that not happened recently <laughs> here? Yeah. Have we not been yeah. dealing with this? Yeah. So it's it's interesting <clears throat> to watch, but plus its own sci-fi lore. Uh, and while this is, I mean, I, I suppose it's technically a sequel. I don't really think of it that way because it's still telling the same story. It's just a, it's just genuinely a, a part two. Uh, and I really, <laughs> 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 My man sneezed and actually said, I chew! <laughs> I, I thought Julian was watching going off again. <laughs> Even Julian was like, huh? <laughs> I chew! <laughs> like a word just stopped. <laughs> I mean, for the almost three hours, I was never bored. I was always interested. I, I do wish it had the memorable, di memorable dialogue and the, and the characters. But with everything that happens at the end, it, it really had me fired up to like, man, I want I want that third part right now. Yeah, it's gonna be a while. I'll I know. Tell you, I'll tell you that. <laughs> no, 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 of course it's gonna be a while. But but you know what? To look at it, you can see like, yeah, something like this doesn't happen quickly. And that's that's the joy of it. Uh, but I'm with you, I, I give it a low full price. Shit, see, one thing about me is that I've never read the books, mm -hmm. none of the Doom books. But like watching Dune actually makes me want to read the books. Mm -hmm. But then I remember who the f 
And I know I ain't reading no goddamn dude. Well, that book. first book about this big. <laughs> oh, yeah, I ain't doing that shit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, I loved everything I saw here, man. This is one of the movies where I said earlier, go see us on IMAX. Just yeah. from the visuals alone. The visual alone blew me away. When, where I was like, yo, this needs to win some awards <clears> just <throat> off the visuals. And I know a lot of people are saying that this movie is a, is a masterpiece. I don't feel like it's a masterpiece. I feel like it's close to a masterpiece. Mm-hmm. I feel like this movie will be what Oppenheimer was last year. Like when it comes to like the awards and stuff like that, I feel like it will sweep a lot. Um, this is definitely my favorite movie of the year, at least so far. Uh, this is a full price for me. All right, yeah, there you go. Okay then. Well, th- there you go, people. Full prices all around. Should not want to see a movie directed by this dude and Christopher Nolan, man. You had me thinking about that. <laughs> 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 Just people talking like deaf people in there. <laughs> 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 oh.